Hey guys, everybody joining us here for the virtual study of Transformed. Welcome. When I chose to help lead that for our ladies group through church. I really found that I was pulling even more from the study. So don't be scared to do it more than once. Um, I was hesitant whether or not it would be, you know, beneficial to do it more than once. And there wasn't really a whole lot of time frame in between. But thankfully, it was it was just something that God continuously pulls uh, more and more information. The same as reading our Bible when we read the same passage, depending on what season of life we're in, uh, oftentimes you'll find that the same verses can have multiple meanings because the way the Holy Spirit speaks to us through uh, his word, which is really cool. So I'm just going to give you a couple of more pages here, examples. So I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, guys, I'm in front of the window. So the, um, throughout the video series and the audio, uh, you'll find that Pastor Rick Warren will give you prompts and words to write down um, on the journal or the printables. The reason for that is because when you're doing a Bible study, it's okay to read it, um, but writing it down really helps solidify it in our minds, as well as looking up the verses. So even though the verses are provided on the printables and in the journal, it is beneficial to take out the Bible and really start um, reading the Bible, finding those verses. There's power in the word. Um, I really believe that. And, you know, that's my personal opinion about the solidify, the solid portion of the Bible, having that physical um, thing in your hand. So even when I go to church, even though they have it up on the screen, for instance, and, you know, the pastor, you know, obviously you can pull it up on your phone or things like that. If you have the mobile, um, version of the Bible on your phone. I prefer personally still to have the book in hand when I was in, I grew up going to private Bible school for most of my upbringing. And I was raised a Baptist, but now I'm non-denominational. So <laughs> there's no uh, specific ties. I get along with everybody and understand everybody is on different journeys. And so that's really beautiful. But part of um, kind of our upbringing was to understand that the Bible is like our sword. So <laughs> it was kind of a beautiful sentiment to me to think that even in the world and it's chaos and feeling like everything sometimes is at war, you know, and the devil's using so many different things that we have the Bible, you know, to be our sword in battle on the battlefield and that doesn't mean to use scripture against people but it means to use the word of god and jesus's love and all of his teachings to help guide us through it and help um, lead more people to him and be a proper steward um, of christ and so i think that that's just a beautiful sentiment and i hope that kind of sticks with you it really stuck with me uh, growing up so guys i just wanted to share that with you um, i'll also show you this is what the audio series looks like. So it's in this little thick um, package here. So we ordered that. And the reason why we ordered the audio as well is because my husband was working outside of the home at the time of me doing the study. And it was resonating so much with me that he really wanted to take part in that, which I thought was really awesome. And so what he chose to do was have the audio version. And he would play that in the truck while he was driving to and from clients' homes and things like that. And so it really allowed him to kind of use that time, which a lot of times you know we're just kind of blindly tuning into the radio um, and you don't realize sometimes how when you listen to audio uh, it really sinks into your subconscious even when you may not think that you are fully understanding it or hearing it um, it's really funny how our minds work but but that's another option for you as well if you wanted to order the audio if um, where the audio especially is not available online anymore there's not um, from what I understand, there's no variations between the audio and the, the DVD series, the video series. So it's just completely up to your preference. I did order the DVD series, of course, like I mentioned, because the um, I was leading the study through um, our ladies group of church. And so it was more beneficial for us to watch the DVDs together, which was really fun. And so much um, growth happened within our group. <laughs> and I'll get to the topic of finding purpose, even when you're not sure what your purpose is yet. Um, and in doing so, I wanted to share with you another study um, by Pastor Rick Warren. Um, originally, it was called The Purpose if you can see that the purpose driven life. So if you haven't read that book um, and you have, or you have, maybe you have an old version of it, cause this is the old version. Um, not that the new version is not uh, just as wonderful. And I'll show you that in just a moment, but um, it's just, this is kind of like the original in case you had that. Or if you happen to see this one is very commonly found at secondhand bookstores and like thrift shops and things like that. And so you may be able to get your hands on this, but if you're really struggling with um, kind of understanding what your purpose here is on earth and understanding 
understanding that every single one of us has been given different gifts, even though sometimes I talk to people and they're like, you know, you're a multi-gifted person, Amanda. Like, I have no idea what my gifts are. I have no talents and blah, blah, blah. But guys, <laughs> I'm here to encourage you and, to, and help you understand that you can't, first of all, compare yourself to anybody because each of us are different. Um, I, if you've looked at me and thought the same thing, that I have multiple talents, um, it's, I would say more so because of the fact that I have taken, and this is not to set me apart, just to explain that it's not so much that I have multiple talents or that God-given talents, it's just that I've had so many interests over the years that I've developed or developed, I don't know what the word is, but you know what I mean, um, use so much time and effort and energy into studying um, and utilizing the different things that, you know, any of you could tap into and still can tap into. So I encourage you to do that. If you're like, I would love to learn how to paint and I have no idea how to do that, then go take some classes because it's so much fun. Um, and yeah, all of us suck at the start. Like we truly do. Like a lot of people think that, you know, as kids, they're like, oh, okay, you know, my art looks compared to a child. Well, if a child starts there as a child and then over time continues drawing or painting or whatever, then of course, over the years, they're going to get better at that. Well, the same can say for me, that was one of my passions. And so I used to paint and draw as a child. And over the years, it's just progressively gotten better. And I have so much room for improvement, guys. Like I am not <laughs> any proclaimed um, artist by any means, but just using that as an example. And so if you've never done that, even very much as a child, of course, you're going to look like a child version when you first start. So this can be said of any anything. So use this comparison as kind of a metaphor for anything. If you want to become a public speaker and all of a sudden, you know, in the beginning, you feel like you're a fumbling fool. <laughs> I've been there and here yet here I am. And I still fumble all over the place. And I've been doing live videos for about two years now um, and recorded videos even before that. And I still fumble and I still get scared to come and press the record button and the live button. I still lose track of what I'm talking about and go off on tan tangents. I cry, ugly cry sometimes in front of the camera. There's so many different things, guys, but you have to kind of step out of your fear of uh, judgment of um, especially self-judgment because I think we're all our big own biggest critics and just try it and know that the more you tap into whatever those things are that you're passionate about or that you are interested in that God can use those and really nurture them and you may try them and then think not only you know maybe you're like wait I suck at this but I really don't like this you know you've tried it I've done that too there are certain things I've tried like my son is an avid gamer and I love listening to him talk about it. It's really interesting to hear all the different things, but to sit down and me actually play, I suck at it. And <laughs> it's not something that I thoroughly enjoy because it's just not an interest of mine, but that doesn't de deter or pull from the fact that he's excellent at it and that he is really passionate about it. So whatever it is that you are, you know, looking into or interested in, step out and try it. So it was so life transforming for me when I did that study that that was one of the things that God used the most to deliver me from the health struggles and stress struggles that I was having a couple of years ago after losing my dad so for me it's transformational <laughs> as it's called transformed but it truly was transformational and I think that regardless of whether you've suffered loss regardless of whether you're suffering with your health I believe that it taps into so many different um, key areas of life that if you really allow this study to speak to your heart and allow and pray that God uses it and speaks to you through it, that it will too transform your life in ways that you never imagined. I personally will firstly uh, admit that I was kind of against tithing uh, to the church. Um, and the reason for that is growing up, I grew up, like I said, as a Baptist, and it seemed like we were uh, expected to do it. It wasn't, and if you didn't put money in the offering plate, then people were kind of like, you know, scoffing or, you know, looking at you differently. And unfortunately, that's out in the same in a lot of churches. So please do not be put off by that. Um, well, first, if you are uh, experiencing that, that's not the right way. And that's a good church will not do that. So be encouraged to know that, um, 
if you're in the right church and a, a good solid Bible believing and Jesus loving church, that they're not going to be pressuring you to, to tithe or to put anything into the offering plate because that's not their mission. That's not what God's mission is. If after you are going to the church and you become part of your, that's part of your family, you know, then, and you want, you see value in what they're doing and you see value in um, expanding, you know, God's work in the area, then you will feel led <laughs> to tithe. And so uh, that was part of the thing that I learned through the study. And the other side of that was that um, while I was used to think of tithing as giving to the poor and helping, you know, the less fortunate and, you know, um, doing all of that, those are wonderful things, but those are actually um, giving of our gifts and giving of our overflow, as I talked about in um, some of the other videos that I've done in the last few years. Um, but tithing is completely different. Tithing is, and this study really speaks to it better than I could possibly, but tithing is a way of you expressing and acknowledging that our money is not our money it's god's money and we're just gifted to it uh we've been given the gift of the funds to utilize here on earth um, to survive off of to bless other people with to further god's kingdom and just to do so many different wonderful things and it's been entrusted to us and if you think of it as that that it's lent to us that it's god's money then by tithing what does what that does is it's giving back to god as kind of an offering and letting him know that you are acknowledging that he is um, in charge of your finances he's in charge of what comes in um, and goes out and part of that is also that acknowledging that is understanding that by giving that back that 10 percent back you're saying okay thank you um and please you know show let me show you that i am um, worthy and that i'm utilizing this to uh the best ability and please bless this 10 percent that i'm giving back um, to further your kingdom and bless more people and it just continues to spread and grow and so one of my um, kind of symbolize symbols that I use to symbolize kind of my work that I'm doing um, is how I start with the like the little seedling and then I work up to the full leaf um, which then turns into the tree and so I just wanted to give you guys kind of that and leave that with the world as um, kind of like faith as, you know, as small as a mustard seed starts with that little sprig and that all of us make that difference. All of us are the little sprigs and we weave together to um, become like a whole rooted system, which eventually grows into a giant tree and provides shade for people, provides shelter uh, for many uh, animals and things like that and provides oxygen. So, you know, breathing life back into people. There's just so many different symbolizations that can come from a tree and from the growth process. So I hope that kind of explains a little bit more of why I chose that as my symbol. And of course, my middle name is Hope and the tree of life slash the tree of hope sometimes depends on the culture that you hear it from has just always resonated with me from the time I was a little girl. And as you can see, I wear the symbols quite often. I don't know if I can show that, but I have a tree of life um, rock or ring that I wear every day and a tree of life little bracelet. Oh. <laughs> and I have necklaces and things like that, but it's just a big symbol for me. So getting back again, furthering the conversation about finding purpose. When you are struggling with that, and I encourage you if you are struggling to do that um, other series that I'm talking about, and let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to set that up for you guys. Um, when you are struggling with that, the important thing is, is to not focus on the struggle and instead focus on what you what you can do right now what are the little things that you can do are you feeling like listening to those nudges i talk about that quite often and my friend shalina who's in this group she often talks about that as well when you listen to those nudges even if it's just picking up a phone call and i say just but sometimes that can be life altering for the receiver as well as you um sending a note of gratitude or a thinking of you note to somebody or I don't know. There's just so many different examples I could give guys. Um, 
just listening to those nudges and making those little 1% changes as you often hear different people talk about by doing these little steps and listening to those nudges and taking the next initiative, it will often, God will start pointing you in the direction that um, he's intended for your life, which is really beautiful to watch unfold and be part of, especially if it's your life or someone that you are mentoring or um, kind of locked arms with to walk through life with, if it's a family member, a friend or whatever client, um, to be able to see how they step into the purpose. And that's what it's all about is we can't just expect to do nothing and expect God to just, you know, I'm sure that there are cases where God just kind of enlightens somebody and they're like, poof, okay, this is my purpose. And then they just go off on the path. Well, that's great. But the majority of people that doesn't happen to. And so part of our discipleship um, as followers of Christ is that we just take um, the initiative to just start doing little steps as we can. It doesn't have to be big grand gestures. Like I said, it could be just even a note on Facebook um, just to let the person know that you're thinking of them and, and listen to the nudges. Um, inspired action is where you hear, you feel that nudge and you feel like someone's been laid on your heart and on your mind and you don't know why. You don't know if they're going through something or not, but you reach out to them and just say, hey, you've been on my mind and I just wanted to say, say hi and let you know I was thinking about you. And sometimes just doing that, it opens up more conversation and that's often the case. And then what happens is um, you just start more things, more doors start opening. And then before you know it, there's, it's leading to furthering um, not only God's kingdom, but also in furthering the path to your purpose here on earth, because every single one of us has a purpose, regardless of talents, regardless of walks of life, regardless of age or race or gender, it doesn't matter. We all have a purpose. And so I encourage you guys to just start listening to those nudges more and just start taking little steps of faith. And like I said, it can just start with that little message. Faith is small as a mustard seed, right? So thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope this has been helpful to you or encouraging to you. Let me know uh, what your biggest takeaways were in the comments.